got your Bibles, lift them up this morning. Just repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. Every word in it is true. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught God's word. It's his truth transforming every part of my life. And I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yesterday, as I was uh, walking across the parking lot, somewhere near the end of the day, a little girl walked up to me. I've never seen her before. Uh, she was probably second or third grade, about this tall. Little ponytail, again, never seen her. She just walked up, wrapped her arms around my waist, and said, thank you for doing this for us. I thought, wow. And she looked up at me and smiled, and pew, she was gone. <laughs> About maybe 10 minutes later, I'm walking back, and another little girl walks up. She was a cool cat. She had her hat back on, on backwards. She said, hey. I said, I don't know. I said, hey. <laughs> she said, can I hug you? <laughs> I said, hugs are my favorite. <laughs> she hugged me. I was good. <laughs> At that point, I was good. Because I thought, wow, it's always about the one. Always about the one. This next series we're going into is called More. We're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit and his role in our lives. And I'm going to give you a very, very short version today. Because we've gone a little long, which I knew we would. And the Lord told me when I was praying about it, he said, I got this. I said, okay. But here's a question that I have for you today. How did the disciples change the world? Think about it. Think about it. How did the disciples change the world? I mean, here are these people. You got to understand who they were. They were us. I mean, they, there were no theologians among the group. There, there were no trained pastors among these group of disciples and even the 120 that followed and all those that came after. Primarily, they were fishermen. They were, there was a tax collector. There was an IRS guy. Right? There was a political zealot, which was, we would call him a, a political activist. He was the guy that said, down with the Romans, man. There was a Pharisee, Paul, religious leader later that came along. I mean, these were just people that Jesus called. People like me and you. They, they were not special, they were just called. What made them special later was, you know, people would say, well, maybe it was because they had been with Jesus, but the truth is that helped. But what changed their world was the fact that they were empowered by the Holy Spirit to do what God had called them to do. It's because of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit of God entered into them and empowered them to accomplish God's will in and through their lives. And that's the same promise today as it was then. See, the mission that the church has is so big the mission that we have is so, so large that none of us in our own power can do it. None of us are good enough. None of us have the supernatural power within ourselves to change the world. Only God working in and through us can do that. Jesus said this in the book of Acts. And this is the first chapter. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken into heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. This is important. He said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised you, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, it's the first baptism, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 verse 8 says this, you will receive power. Everybody say power. That word power translated from Greek is dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite. So when he said you're going to receive power, he said the Holy Spirit is going to come on you and be inside of you and it's going to be like dynamite. That's a, that sounds like fun. 
You know, one of the guys was talking to me the other day. He said, Pastor, I got an idea. He said, we need to go hog hunting with Tannerite. That's like dynamite. He said, we need to blow some hogs up. That's very appealing to me. But when I think about that, because I've watched videos on it, and I was thinking that dunamis is, is the Holy Spirit power in us is like dynamite. That means stuff can blow up, stuff can happen. That is a cool thing. And that was the promise that Jesus gave us. That you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Everybody say witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so I want you to understand something today. Part of my goal with this series is de to demystify who the Holy Spirit is. See, the, the truth is, most of us, if you grew up in church at all, you probably grew up in a church that either really emphasized the work of the Holy Spirit or de-emphasized the work of the Holy Spirit. And, and we need to talk about that the work of the Holy Spirit is not a denominational thing. See, we think, well, the Pentecostal Charismatics, they're all about the Holy Spirit, and the Baptist and Method, they're not, and, and the Catholics are over here, and everybody, and, we, and what happens is we categorize people, and we, and we put the Holy Spirit in a box and say, well, that's this bunch, is and, it, and it's messed up. It's just messed up. And here's the thing I want you to understand. I grew up in the Methodist church, very conservative, Okay. I get it. Those of you that grew up in a conservative environment, so did I. I understand, but, uh, but my mom, my dad was Methodist. My mom grew up in the Assembly of God Church, so I kind of grew up in this world where I was seeing both sides of this thing. So I would see the Holy Spirit at work, and, and, but, but then day to day, I was in this household where we didn't talk a whole lot about the role of the Holy Spirit, and that was my experience. But what I did see or hear or know of the Holy Spirit was maybe the Holy Spirit's a little bit weird. See, I understand who the Father is, I understand who God the Father is. I understand Jesus. He was a person. I get that. I can put a face on Jesus. That makes sense to me. But the Holy Ghost? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but the, the King James guys did the best they could when they named that, they translated the name, but, but they called him the Holy Ghost. I, mean, I wish they almost would have called him Bob or something because people, the Holy Ghost, that freaks people out. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The Holy Ghost. And so what happens is we immediately from the get-go begin to categorize the Holy Spirit as I don't even understand that deal. And that was never how it was supposed to be. Never how it was supposed to be. And a matter of fact, we see in the life of the disciples and the people, all the, all the people that became Christians in the early part of the church, encounters with the Holy Spirit were normal. It was what we call, from an academic perspective, it was the normative experience of Christians in those days. That, that they saw the Holy Spirit at work and encountered the presence of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the mission was so great, they needed a power beyond themselves. Why? Because they were just like us. And they realized that Jesus said, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. But here's why we receive power. So that we can be what? Witnesses. So Jesus gives us the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be witnesses about who he is. And I want you to understand from the very beginning of this series, that's what it's all about. We can talk about different gifts and we will. We can talk about different experiences and we will. But the foundational principle of the power of the Holy Spirit living in you and living in me is so that I can be a witness of who Jesus is, which is part of what happened yesterday. That's part of what happened yesterday. I want you to look, go down to number one on your notes. We're not going to have time to cover everything today. It's 11.06, and I'll be going back over all this. Today's, today's an introduction, okay? Was there a big thought up there first? No. Okay. We're going to go down here. This is how this works, ladies and gentlemen. Just, just bear with me. Who will receive power? The answer there is you. Number one on your notes today. We have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. John 16 verse 7 says this. Very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now, that is a weird thought to me. As a young Christ follower, I never could understand that. Why would Jesus say, if he's here with us, I mean, can you imagine being the disciples? Here's Jesus right here with them. 
God in the flesh walking around with them. And Jesus said, hey guys, it's a good thing that I go away. And I'd be like, what? But that's what he said. He said, it's good that I'm going away. And here's why it's good that I'm going away. Unless I don't, if I don't go away, I can't send the advocate. I can't send the Holy Spirit to you. But if I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. John 14 verse 17 says this, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you will know him for he lives with you and will be in you. See, that's a cool thing. See, what Jesus was saying here is very simple. He said, I'm a person, right? But if I go away, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit and he's gonna be inside of you. He's going to be on the inside of you. What does that mean? Here's the first big thought today. It is better to have the Holy Spirit inside of you than Jesus outside of you. It's better to have the Holy Spirit in you than Jesus outside of you. How many of you know you're only one person? Can I see your hands? Good. Nobody is crazy. That's awesome. Jesus knew that there were going to be billions of people in this world and the power of the Holy Spirit being in us is the power and the presence of God in us. And we need the power and presence of God in us because of what we deal with every day. And if the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me, that means the very presence of God is on the inside of me and goes with me everywhere I go. So I don't have to run to church to find Jesus. He's right here. The power of God is in me. If the Holy Spirit is living in me, then the very power and the presence of God is living in me. And guys, that's an amazing thought. And here's the deal. You know who the, the Holy Spirit is available to? Anyone who believes. So that means the power and presence of God can live inside of me. Now, next week, I'm gonna talk about the three different baptisms the scripture talks about. I'm not gonna go into those today, but I want you to understand that the goal of us as Christians, because I wanna be a better witness for him, is I need the power and the presence of God within me. Why? Because in those moments that I run into in life, I need him. Because this world's a little much. Would any of you agree that this world can be a little much? If not, you've been living under a rock. Because we are living in a time that we need him now more than ever. And I need the Holy Spirit inside of me. And guess what? So do you. Look at number two on your notes. We have a permanent relationship with the Holy Spirit. We have a permanent relationship with the Holy Spirit. Watch this. John 14, 16, and 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, the Holy Spirit, to help you and be with you. And look at this last word, forever. How long is forever? Is that a long time? Forever. So it's not like come and go. Now, here's why this is important. If you look at the Old Testament, and I encourage you to do that. That's in the front part of your Bible. Here's what happened in the Old Testament whenever the Holy Spirit would show up. Every time. Watch what happens. It'll say the Spirit of God did this, or the Spirit of God did that. Samson, how many of you know who Samson is? Big, strong dude. Or Or a dude that became strong, right? So here's Samson. And and Samson's out there, hear me now, believe me later. The strength of God will come. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Come on, y'all, help me out. I mean, so so here's what happened. Watch this. I encourage you to do this. Go go to the book of Judges and read about Samson. And here's what it'll happen. It'll say, Samson ran over and grabbed the, the jawbone of a donkey. And the spirit of God came on him. Okay, so here's what would happen in Old Testament pre-Jesus, is that the Spirit of God would come on people to do something and then leave. He did not remain with them. The disciples understood that, because that's how they had been trained as well. So Moses would do something, Spirit of God would come on him. Joshua would do something, Spirit of God would come on him. That's the way it worked. The Old Testament. So when Jesus said this, it was totally different than what they'd been trained in their whole life. Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is going to come on you. And they go, I get that because of Old Testament. So whenever I need to do something, the Holy Spirit may jump on me from time to time and and then he'll leave. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you and he's going to be in you. And then he changed the rules right here forever. In other words, when, when the Holy Spirit, when we receive the power of God in our life and the spirit of God comes on us, he's never going to leave us. That's awesome. 
How many of you have ever used a battery in a tool before? How many of you have ever had a flashlight at nighttime when it was really dark and you're, you're all happy? What happens when the light goes out? It gets dark, doesn't it? Why? Well, I'm going to have to plug that battery back in or I'm going to have to get another battery. And so what happens is, this is, the, this is the connection I want you to see. All right, so the Holy Spirit comes on me and the Holy Spirit's doing stuff and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit's gone. Well, I got to go plug myself back in and recharge And then I can go back out and do that again. And God said, no, no, we're not going to do it that way anymore. That's not very efficient. What we're going to do now that Jesus has come and he's ascended to the Father is we're going to send the Holy Spirit to you and you're going to have the power in you all the time, not some of the time. That's pretty awesome. That means in any moment, here's the deal. I want to make this so practical, you guys will get this. You ready? All right, so let's say, let's say you know you're going to have a big meeting tomorrow. It's going to be a big day. You got a big meeting, okay, and everybody at your company is going to be in this meeting, or maybe it's at school, and you got a big presentation tomorrow, and this is for your final grade, and you got to get this good, or you're going to fail. Has any of y'all ever done that before? Is this new information? Your parents know about this. Okay. All right, so... So here's the deal. You know that's tomorrow. What should you probably do? Be prepared. Thank you. I'm going to be prepared for this meeting. So I'm going to get ready so that when I walk into the meeting, I'm ready. How many of you have ever gone to school or work, but let's say school, and you walked in and the teacher said, hey, guys, today we're going to have a Pop pop quiz. Now, they've been telling you about this pop quiz the last two weeks. But you're so smart, you decided what? Ah, just wing it. Or, like your pastor has done before, I forgot, because I wasn't paying attention. Point your neighbor and say, he's not talking to you right now. It's okay, go ahead. Turn your neighbor, not talking to you right now. So here's the deal, here's here's the practical application. The Holy Spirit... You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen t- five minutes from now. I, I can't even tell you what's going to happen. Ten, I don't even know what's going to happen 10 seconds from now. But I bet you there's going to be some things that go on in your life that you weren't prepared for. There are going to be situations that come up that can be devastating. There can be opportunities that come up that could change your life for the better. But you never really know when some of those things are going to happen. Because the way the world works, we don't know everything. And so you can't prepare for every situation you're ever going to face. You can't say, oh, hold on, teacher. Do you mind if I go study for a few hours and then come back? What's your teacher going to say? You should have been. Wow. Wow. Y'all have experienced this as well, I see, right? And what the Holy Spirit allows us to do, what the scripture tells us is, is the Holy Spirit being with us and being in us means that we have access to all the power that we need for any situation that we face. I don't have to go, oh, there's a crisis. Oh, I need to go listen to a sermon for myself. <laughs> or, hey, hold on a minute, everybody. I'm going to sit down and read these four passages of scripture so I'll be better. Because that's not the way crisis works. You need to be able to respond sometimes right now. And when the power of the Holy Spirit is with you and lives inside of you, he empowers you to do what God needs you to do in the moment. Why? Because it's not you. Your job is simply to be available. And sometimes it's just turning on the light switch. God, here I am. Use me in this moment. I pray that when I'm up here, Dave will tell you almost every week when I'm up here, that's what I'm praying. Because I don't know what you need all the time. I don't know what crisis you're going through. Some I do, some I don't. But the Holy Spirit does. And my job is simply to make myself available because you know what can happen? God can literally speak to you through me, which is crazy. That the power of God can speak to you through me and he can change your life by flowing through my life.
But it's the same exact thing for you, that God has given you that same opportunity. And you go, well, I'm just a fisherman. What do I know? <laughs> or I'm just a tax collector. Or I'm just retired. Or I just play golf. Or I'm just a mom. Or I'm just a nurse. Or I'm just a whatever. And the power of God says, no, what you are is a disciple. You are a child of God with the power and the presence of God inside of you that can change the world. That's who you really are. And the devil wants to convince you that you're just a whatever your job is. I'm just a kid. I'm just a student. I'm just a girl. I'm just a whatever your label is on your life. And the devil works overtime to convince you that's all you are. But listen, guys, y'all have got to get this on the inside of you. When you surrender yourself to the Lord and ask him to fill you with his spirit and use you every day, the very power and the presence of God flows in you and through you. You are a world changer. And that is the truth. And it's not you. It's the power of God through you. And God can use you in any moment to change somebody's forever. That's who we are. And that's why the devil is scared of people like that. You know, I learned a long time ago that I can't fix anybody. It used to drive me nuts. When I first came here as a pastor, it drove me nuts. Like all these people, and well, such and such is having a problem with this, and so, and then people come into my office, and this is going on, and that's going on, and I was like, oh, I was a nervous wreck. And then I read a scripture one day because the Holy Spirit reminded me to read this scripture. And it was Jesus talking and he said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Give me your yoke and take my yoke. That totally freed me up. Because then I realized, and some of y'all need to get this, is that I can't fix much of anything. But the power of God flowing through me can. So my job is to be available and so is yours. And it is the same. Listen, I don't care if you grew up Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, because I think a lot of us don't get it all either. Charismatic. I don't care what flavor of church you grew up in. This isn't about that. This is about God needs his children to walk in this world and be the lights of this world. Your background sometimes can mess you up. And we need to just come to him and say, Lord, I just need you. Forget the label. I am proud of my heritage theologically. But it's certainly not perfect. So we, we appreciate our theological heritage. But we recognize as Christ followers that we need him. And I want to tell you something. I heard an elder pastor say this one time, and I thought it was genius. He said, you know, and now he was saying God looks down from heaven. The Lord's here. But he was just saying, imagine if God looked down from heaven and he saw all these churches. He probably wouldn't know what they were because there's no labels on top of the buildings. <laughs> I thought that was cute. But it's true. He's just looking at his people. He's just looking at his people. You know, yesterday was one of the pastors from the Baptist churches in town had a really cool Corvette. So we got to go talk for a little while. And he said, man, come to the prayer meeting in the next week or two. We're going to be doing this. He said, it's just pastors coming together, praying for our community. I like that. Because it's about the church, not just our church. That's why when you take communion today, if you don't belong to our church, we're fine with that. We're Christ followers. We're all part of one family. We're going to get up to heaven and we're all going to be there. And there's going to be some denomination shocked that you're there. <laughs> you know it? They're going to go, oh, seriously? <laughs> That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm here too. Right? Praise God for grace. Amen. Praise God for grace. Amen. But what I want you to consider, I'm going to close. Well, I'm sorry. I, I, y'all got all these notes. Y'all want me to give you all the notes so y'all don't freak out? 
How many of my note takers are gonna lose their minds if I don't cover the rest of the notes today? Anybody? We'll survive. All right, I'm gonna pick this back up next week. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Here's what I want you to get. We should be backpack Christians every day. What, what you experience Saturday should be normative for you. That you should live the kind of life where you're, think about yesterday, we had that talk and, and that person in front of you and I saw you guys doing it. That you were so focused on that one. Do that every day. Can you imagine how that would transform your business? Instead of looking at customers like a number, you looked at them like a person. Ow. Teachers, Chris and you guys, teachers do this so well. You look at each one of those students as a precious gift from God and you treat them that way. And their parents, that's the hard part. It's usually students aren't too bad. But think about that. What if we walked with that every day going, every one of these people here is a, is a precious child of God. Some of them just don't know him yet. Maybe I get to be the person to introduce them. Cutting that person's hair. Meeting them in the line at the pharmacy. Just running to them at the grocery store. You are a walking witness, Jesus said. It's not about your job. It's about your life. It's about your life. Where you get to be a witness for him. Empowered with the presence of God that can change somebody's forever. You get to do that. What an awesome thing. So let's not make this a one time a year something. Let's make a decision that we can allow God to fill our lives and use us every single day to change our community. And let me just tell you this, and I promise I'll close. This is my second close. I get one more. That's what Trish said. I get three. Second close, okay? Second close. When you allow the very presence and power of God to flow in you and through, and through you, you're going to love people around you better. And you know who you're going to love better first? Your family. You're going to treat your family better. And some of y'all need to. Some of y'all are better at loving other people than you are your own family. You know what my first ministry is as a pastor? Aaron, this is the truth. We talked about this. My first ministry is my family. My kids, my wife, they're my first ministry. If I serve you well, but I don't lead them well, I have failed. Right, Dennis, right? And it's the same for you. So when the power and the presence of God begins to live in you and through, you're gonna love your family better. That's good news, right? Somebody say amen. amen. Now then what happens? That overflow I talk about almost every week. Then your coworkers, they'll start looking at you and going, what's different about you? Wes, you were this jerk and now you're nice. <laughs> oh, I love y'all so much. Hey, y'all chose to be here. I didn't make you come. That's your choice. That's on y'all. But, but, but that's what happens is that we begin to change in our relationships around us. We begin to treat people like we want to be treated. I think that's called the golden rule. But he empowers us to do that. And it changes not only our family, but it begins to change the relationships around us. But then something else happens, like yesterday. Where it moves beyond your close relationships and it begins to move into your community. And, and part of what I do on Saturday is I get to meet with our community leaders that are here and I'll typically, you'll see me walking around with somebody. So I'll be walking around with this leader and I get to watch their eyes and get to see their hearts get touched by you. You. Them seeing people they know, them seeing people they don't know, they're just loving people. Do you realize yesterday there was 150 people here? That's over half our church was here serving yesterday. That's amazing. And, and they don't hear bickering and fighting in public. <laughs> but they don't. They, all they see is these people going and serving and kids. And, and they're literally walking around going, what is going on? This feels like, Monica said it, heaven. 
Do you realize when the power of God came on Pentecost, the Bible says they were all in one place in one accord? They were all pulling the same direction. You know why the power of God moves so much during the backpack? Is that we're all focused on the same thing. It's not about the color of the paint or what pastor was wearing today or what sister Susie did to you. You're focused on those people around you and it keeps your heart right. So what happens then is our family gets changed. Our relationships begin to change and then our community begins to change. Our community begins to change. That's how you change our country and get us back to Jesus. It isn't griping or complaining. Stop it. It's loving people so much that they see God in you that can change them. Your political opinion will change no one's life. Listen to me. It will not. But the power of God flowing in you and through you can change someone's forever. And that's way better than who ends up in the White House next time. I have very strong political opinions, but it will change no one's eternity. But if I introduce them to Jesus, their whole world can be transformed. Amen? I'm glad to hear some amens on that one because that's the truth. We need to be the church. Stop playing church. We need to be the church. Stop talking about church. We need to be witnesses to our community, to our family, to our friends. And that's what this series is all about. Amen? Amen. So y'all keep coming. Keep watching. Whatever you need to do, get this on the inside of you. Jesus said, it's good that I go away because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I need him and so do you. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning for your power and your presence. Thank you this this morning, Lord, for your goodness that's over us. I thank you, Father, that we were able to come today as as a church congregation together, as a family. Those that are part of this church, those that are just visiting, we're all here together for you, Lord. I thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray in a very real way that we've had an encounter with you today. I hope that you've piqued people's hearts this morning. I know you've touched my heart and I know you've touched other people's hearts today. Lord, I just ask you in the name of Jesus to begin to transform us. I believe you planted so many seeds yesterday not just in those that attended, but those of us that were here, some that weren't even here yesterday that are here today that were touched by your love and your mercy. Lord, help us to know you more. Our world is broken. There's heartache all around us. And you are the cure. You're the solution. Lord, I pray that as we, as we draw close to you, as we continue to surrender our lives to you, Lord, that in a very real way that you will fill us full of your presence so that the world will know that there's a Savior. That people will see your presence in us from the youngest to the oldest that lives will be changed for eternity because of your goodness that's in us. Lord, I pray today in the name of Jesus that families in our church and in our community will be restored. I pray supernatural grace that flows, Lord, that you draw families back together. I pray that hearts will be restored, that forgiveness will flow and restoration will happen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask you to move and begin to repair family relationships between husbands and wives. Lord, that you will mend broken hearts. That you will reestablish relationships. Lord, I pray for the children that have gone astray. Or maybe the parents that have gone astray. That Lord, you would call them back to your home. Lord, I ask you to supernaturally begin to move in our church, that physical bodies would be healed, that clouded minds would be at peace and clear, that broken hearts would be restored. 
thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, the most important miracle of all is that people would come to know you and their lives would be changed in eternity, but that you would save them. That you would save them. If you're here today, nobody looking around, please, for a moment. If you're here today and you've never received Christ as your Savior, or you're here today and you're a Christian, but you're one of those Christians that God has called you back home. If you want to reestablish that relationship with him today, either accept him for the first time as Savior and Lord, or rededicate your life to him, just slip your hand up right now and say, Pastor, that's me. That's what I want today. That's what I need today. I'll stand for a moment. I'd like the prayer partners to come down to the front, please. What I'm going to do in a moment, and I want this to become normative for our church, is I'm going to dismiss you, okay? After I dismiss you, if you have anything you need to pray about, anything, listen to me. I'm not trying to be silly but I want you to listen to me. If your dog's sick and you want somebody to pray for you, if your family's hurt, if you've got a sickness in your body, you've got something going on, I want you to come down today and we're gonna pray for you. And I want that to be normative. And if I ever forget, y'all remind me, okay? Will you do that? Because Jesus said, my house is to be a house of prayer. Now listen, it's not about the church building. It's about his people because you are the church. You're the church. So when I dismiss in a moment, if you have a prayer need, I want you just to step out and come down here and pray in the front, okay? We pray over you today. Father, I thank you for your goodness. Lord, I thank you for your presence. Lord, I thank you for what you did yesterday. I think yesterday was just a start. Lord, I pray that you would change us from the inside out. Make us the people you want us to be. Flow in us and through us, Lord. Thank you for adding new people to our church family. We're so thankful for that. Thank you for your mercy that continues to flow in us and through us. Lord, we want to be your hands and feet. We want to know you more. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.